Are you talking to me? Huh? Hell yeah! Emily, I'll clear up this sofa later. Welcome to this plumberparts.co.uk video. Uh, made a bit of a cock up. One of you guys commented on part two of adding a radiator to a heating system video. Where's part three? And I replied to him, I was like, mate, I've done part three. Just go back to the, the channel and search for it. Turns out I hadn't done part three. Maybe it's just locked down mushy brain or something like that. Um, I completely forgotten that I'd done that. So this is what we're gonna be looking at in part three, the video I'm making for you now in this video. What we're gonna do is we've got this radiator added here and I. I've shown you already in the previous videos how to make a wall so it's structurally ready for that radiator so you can screw it in um, and then I showed you us piping it into the system in the second video and in the third video we're gonna do actually the bit that is possibly well all those stages are important but if any one of those stages doesn't work quite properly you're not gonna get the new radiator you've added to the system to work properly so what I'm gonna do in this video is show you how to add this radiator to the system. It's been piped in, but how do we make sure that it gets adequate flow to it? How do we make sure that the boiler can supply adequate heat to it as well? And how can we just make sure that it doesn't affect the flow and the heat to other radiators, systems and services in the house as well? So that's what we're gonna look at in this video. Probably not gonna use many tools in this one, but if I do, you'll be able to find them on the Amazon store, links below. So anyway, without further ado, let's get on with the video. Remember to hold tight. So we've got the radiator installed, everything's filled up, we've tested for leaks, there's no leaks anywhere, and we're now ready to try and integrate our radiator onto the heating system. Uh, the first thing I do, and this is going to sound so basic, and this is a basic video, but let's remember that there's people out there who maybe have never done this before, or there might be apprentices who want to know the process that their boss, while they're running around and not being able to teach them, is going, they're going through their boss's head, and the apprentice is like, well, what the hell is going on? So the first thing I do, and it's really simple, is turn the system on. Turn the system on fully. Find all automatic air vents and purge those of air, okay? If once you've done that, you need to top up the pressure in the heating system, I've done videos on how to do that already. I'll leave links to that below. Um, but effectively, what I'm trying to tell you is you might not need to do anything to get this radiator working and to get all the other services working in the house normally as well. Perhaps the system was over specced before you added the radiator, and therefore, once you've turned the system on, boom, this is getting hot. Every other radiator in the house is getting hot. The underfloor heating's getting hot. The coil to the indirect uh, unvented cylinder that you've installed is getting hot, and everything's great. I mean, end this video now. Pull yourself out a pint, scrub yourself on the belly, okay, because you've done a great job. But obviously, you could wait an hour, which is the minimum I'd wait to see if this sort of thing's working. I mean, when you're working at someone's house, it's gonna take you that long to clear up, to get everything in the van, um, hopefully, and make sure that the whole system is working okay. If after an hour, you're finding the other radiators in the system aren't getting hot, or you're finding the radiator that you've installed isn't getting hot, you might need to follow a few steps. Step number one is gonna be balancing the heating system, or you might need to rebalance it. Now, it's one of those horrible things as a plumber, when you go around someone's house and, you, and you're, you've fitted this new radiator and everything isn't working quite properly, you think, well, I'm gonna have to balance the system. And then you go around the radiators, oh my God, they're already balanced. It's like, all right, we can have a little bit of a problem on our hands. But one of the things that I would do, if you find that maybe other radiators aren't getting hot, is to actually balance and strangle out the new radiator that you've installed. On this one here, the lock shield is an Allen key type, and different types of lock shields, and you'll learn this as a plumber, have different types of closing and opening. What I mean by that is, I mean, on most standard lock shields where you've got the old kind of slit type that you'd open with an adjustable, quarter of a turn is the lock shield is now wisping open and it's allowing a reasonable amount of flow to go through the radiator without pinching flow from elsewhere. It's also doing a really important thing and allowing the different temperature from the inlet to the outlet of that radiator to be about 12 to 14, 15 degrees and that will allow your boiler to condense more and will actually save you money on your heating bills. But with this type, when you've got the Allen key type, you sometimes find you have to open it a little bit more. A little tip I'll give you for that is popping a... Is that the cat? <laughs> What's he meowing about? 
A little tip that I'll give you for that is to get a slotted screwdriver or a longish screwdriver so you can put the screwdriver onto the body of the radiator, pop the handle of the screwdriver on your ear, and then as you open up the valve, you'll start to hear a little wisp coming through, or you usually should do if your pump speed is adequate enough to feed the radiator. So it's a good thing to be able to do that. Just add that little wisp, give it half an hour, and then just see what, what's happening. That's one of the real biggest things, if I was gonna give you a tip on how to do this, and I understand that this video is probably gonna be more of a talking video than a doing video, because the, 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 the plumbing side of this has been done. This is all now about tweaking the system and getting it to work how you want it. So it's a good thing to be able to hear the wisp coming through and just crack the radiator open. And like I said, if it was gonna be the biggest tip I'd give you for doing this, is just allow everything, take your time. Everything you do, give it 15 minutes at least to see if what you've done has had an effect on the system. And just a quick tip for you here, try and get your Allen key so it's in a position that's kind of a straight position, so six o'clock, something like that. And then you know when you turn that this way, to three o'clock, you know then you've given it a quarter of a turn, then you turn it this way to 12 o'clock, you know it's had half a turn, and I'm gonna just give it one full turn open like that, so back to six o'clock again, and that should hopefully now mean it's balanced. I really need to clean my tools. <laughs> they are filthy. Them filthy tools there, for the dusty worst. But you know what they say, clean tools, no work. Ah! I suppose I could say that I'm kind of updating what I usually say when it comes to balancing systems out. I used to say, balance the radiators upstairs and don't worry so much about the ones downstairs. I'd now say, pretty much balance every radiator in the house. Um, make sure you've done exactly what I've done there and then leave the system for half an hour to an hour. Remember, if you've got a different type lock shield, particularly this type that I'm showing you here, that's probably only gonna need a quarter of a turn open. Make sure at this point that you open every one of the TRVs in the house. So that means the system is running at full capacity. And also make sure that your indirect cylinder, if you've got one, is open and running as well. And remember as well, if you're finding that all the radiators after you've balanced and after you've turned the pump up aren't getting adequate flow, consider just cracking open the lock shield on that particular radiator just to make sure you haven't strangled it down too far. The next thing I do is if you can find a valve on the return side of the cylinder, that will be a balancing valve. It does exactly what the lock shield does on a radiator, but the balancing valve on the return from the cylinder coil will be your way of strangling the flow that goes to the coil. This is really important because the coils usually take a 22 millimeter feed, and if a two port valve or a three port valve opens up flow to go through to that coil, it's gonna pinch all the flow or quite a lot of the flow from the rest of the system. Now sometimes this is fine if you've got a massive pump and a massive boiler and the people who've worked previously on the system thought well everything's working fine, it doesn't matter. But you've added a new radiator, you've probably diverted flow down to that radiator from another place and it's good practice to make sure that the coil coming from the cylinder is properly regulated. Now sometimes you'll see it's just a gate valve that someone's completely shut or what I've done on the system here, I've put a lever valve on and just made sure that I shut it and then just crack it open a little bit and then that's done. Two port valve there, this is the feed into the top of the coil, automatic air vent, tested that, that's hot, that's working. Valve off, if you ever have a problem with this coil we can valve it off there, just like that. And then this is my balancing valve, and if you look at that, end on, pretty much shut isn't it? So that's what I use to balance the flow through here. But sometimes you'll also find you've got a thing called a flow regulating valve, which is a much better way of doing it. It's the proper way of doing it, but also it's the most expensive. And you're not gonna to tend to find this type of valve on domestic situations. You're gonna find that in a commercial property. But it's very important that you do it. And I'd recommend, while you've got the system drained down, to check that your tank has got that on there. If it has, great. If it hasn't, you've got the system drained down, cut it in, get it in there now. It's a really, really good idea. The next thing we're gonna talk about is boiler temperature, because it is quite a simple one. You shouldn't actually have to do anything with your boiler temperature. It's rare if I fitted a radiator on a heating system that I'm gonna be turning the boiler temperature up. But if the boiler can eventually get out 70 to 75 degree hot water, then you pretty much shouldn't really need to touch it. 
apart from maybe a tiny tweak on the thermostat, but you shouldn't have to do a lot to that. So when it comes to the boiler side of things, I just leave it well alone. We're talking about how we divert flow to the new radiator without pinching it from other radiators and other services. So what is the most important aspect of flow? And it is the heart of the heating system, the one that pumps everything about, and you've guessed it, I've said it already, it's the pump. Now on older pumps, sometimes you'll find that there's one, two, three speeds if you're lucky. And hopefully what will happen is you'll go up into the airing cupboard and you'll find that it's on speed one and it's like wow speed one how about that that's so cool and everything's working okay end the video go away now scrub yourself on the belly maybe even have just a light smidgen of a poo but if you find that the system isn't working properly and you get up into the loft and you find it's set to one then just set the pump to two how about that it's great and you might find that the system works okay now there's another thing if the system's not working properly and you go up into the airing cupboard and you find the pump is set to three already, or you've got a fully modulating pump and it's fully whacking out already, you might need to upgrade the pump. But there are a few other things that you might want to consider as well. Pumps, remember, have a magnetic field around them. We've got electricity there and there's a magnetic field in the pipework near them. It might be a good idea while you've got the system drained down to just whip the pump off quickly, making sure you've got new pump valve rubbers. And this is just a tip. I always keep my rubbers nearby. <laughs> So look, I've got my pump rubbers in here. Plumbers will have loads of these. We keep them all the time. If you, if you ever get a new pump and you've got extra rubbers in there, don't throw those rubbers away. Don't reuse your rubbers, guys. Don't rinse them out and repeat. It's very bad. But what I'm saying is, is you take the pump off, check to make sure they haven't got loads of crap in the pump valve gates, because that can happen. And on, honestly, it's it's common, this is. It's not one of those things that randomly happens. This can happen if you haven't got a properly inhibited heating system, it's not been properly looked after, there's corrosion happening, and you find that the pump valves have got corroded and they've closed up, and sometimes you'll open up and you'll see the hole is like 10 mil, when it should be 22 mil, and you're trying to feed a whole heating system off that. So it's crackers, isn't it? So make sure you've done that. I realise this is in video number three, and if you've watched them in sequence and done one bit at one time, every time you've watched it, that right now you're like, oh my God, plumber parts, why are you telling me this now? I've got the whole heating system full up. It's all me. There you go. <laughs> If we've got a fully modulating pump, so we've got something like the Velo that I've got here, and that is a pump that recognizes the pressure on it and slows down and speeds up according to how many services are opening and calling for flow in the heating system, sometimes you'll find that all you need to do is just slightly turn that up a little bit to get a few extra bits of pump pressure head on the way out, and you'll find that that then will supply the whole system okay. Sometimes you won't. Sometimes the pump is just not man enough or it's old and you have to replace the pump. I sit down now because I need to think a little bit more because my brain's gone. So you've balanced the whole heating system, you've maybe adjusted the modulation of the pump a bit, you found you've got a three speed pump and it was on one, you've set it to two now and everything's getting nice and hot, but you can't hear loads of light hissing because it's too high. Basically you've done it, it's finished. Uh, you could do what I usually do and go around with a Bosch Therm camera and make sure that everything's getting nice and hot. But really, you guys aren't gonna have that equipment if you're like DIYing or you're just starting out as an apprentice. Um, you're gonna be able to go around and make sure those radiators are hot with the back of your hand. Now, it will get to a point in your life, every time you go in a house or every time you go into a pub, when we let back in pubs, if we ever are, uh, you will brush the radiator with the back of your hand. It's just something you do and it will never go away. One of the things I would say about this, this particular part three of this whole little mini, mini video series that I've done, is to recognize that what you've done when you've popped a radiator on and the room's getting a lot warmer, recognize that that is really bloody cool, isn't it? You know, that you've gone out there and you've done that. You've done all these tweaks to the system, you've jockeyed the pump, you've got air out of the system, you've balanced the system, you've made sure that all the thermostat and radiator valves are open, you've really hammered it for a couple of hours to make sure it's working okay. Um, number one, pat yourself on the back, have a cup of tea, and go, yeah, wicked. And the next thing you need to do is set all the thermostatic radiator valves back down to where they need to be. I usually set them on three. If you need to leave the customer with a laminated sheet on how 
thermostatic radiator valves work. Well, you could do that, or you could just show them the video that I've got in the description below that I made, how they work, because there's such, there's such a, a weird misconception as to how they work. People think that thermostatic radiator valves measure the temperature of the water in the radiator. They're not. They're measuring the temperature of the air in the room and adjusting the flow of water going into that radiator. So if you want to watch that video, it's in the link below. I understand this isn't my normal type plumber parts video, but I also recognise that I hadn't made it and it is quite an important last one to the series that we've just made as well. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this little mini series about how to add a radiator to your heating system. If you've got any extra questions or you've done this, comment in the comment section below. There's loads of people who comment there and there's quite a lot of people who sort of return to the comments who are plumbers, who help out. I obviously read them as well or as read them as much as I can. Or of course, you can join the AL Army and ask me a question direct in the Thursday night live streams that go out at 6.30. Usually I've had a beer. You will get a coherent answer. Believe me, all right? Let's get Mr. G. That's another thing. Big G, this is his new sitting place now. He. This basically sits here. This is where he sits. And he sits there and just stares at the at the radiator. He's like, me yeah. Um, George loves it, don't you? Come here, come on, I'll put you on your little bit. Come here. Oh yeah, me yeah. George is 15 in June, aren't you mate? You're so old. You're such an old git now, aren't you? Um, yeah, he's happy. He loves his new bit of radiator, don't you mate? He says, yes, I do. So yeah. Typical. Anyway, thanks ever so much for watching. I'll see you on Wednesday night's video. That's going to be another tool review. I might review this beast here, but it's insane. <laughs> it's literally the biggest sucker I've ever come up against. But I'll see you on Wednesday in the tool review video. And obviously I'll see you on next Saturday. Hit the subscribe button and remember as well to hold tight. See you soon. Radiator, radiator fitted. Radiator, radiator, radiator filled. Radiator, radiator, radiator piped in. Radiator, radiator, radiator balanced. Hot radiators, hot radiators, hot radiators, hot radiators, hot radiators everywhere. Subscribe.